Why can I use double equal signs here if this is an object? Because I am actually comparing addresses. So if the button was clicked, I can do, oh, I can create a method, oh, I'm sorry, a variable, type quadratic called Q. And I want to see. Uh, first, I want to know if the num if the values of A, B, C are letter are numbers, right? Blank space will make my program crash. So I can copy paste codes for all three of them, or I can make a separate method. So before I make a separate method, let's see what I will do. I will probably create a variable type double and I call it input, right? If the value input, so how can I confirm that the number entered? Well, first, how can I check what was enter in that text field. <coughs> well, anything that is visible in here, what you can see, the character, the, the, the wording, as a property type text, if you remember the component class. So, and text is simply A string. So this string, the enter text, can be accessed. Oh, wait. So we have this text box A, or text field A. And there's an access or, or getter called get text. If I hover my mouse, it'll tell me returns the text contained in this text component. All right, that's what I need. All right, so that will give me whatever the user enter as text. Well, how do I know that what was entered was a number? Well, I need to know if this enter tags is numeric, right? Is there something like that? Enter tags that is numeric or something? I don't think it is, right? Hmm. But when I convert this string to a double, how do I convert that string to a double? Remember something called a wrapper classes? which allows me to convert any primitive type to an object. So, the class is called double with a capital D, right? That's my wrapper class. And there's a few methods. There's a parse double that returns the number as a double. Or there's this other method up here, where did it go? All 
right, so what is value of those? Let's see. We're gonna use this one, parse double. We're gonna convert the enter text and we're gonna put it an in input here. And then I can say Q dot say it a oh wait. I have to uh, instantiate this one. A Q equals new quadratic. And then I will have to say Q that set A equal that input. And then I will copy paste that for the others, which is not very efficient. What I can do make a method I can make it private inside my private class you know that returns a double and I can say I don't know number entered that's the name of my method so access or modifiers, then return type, then variable name, I'm sorry, method name. And I need a parameter. I'm gonna be reading this text box. So I could say I just text field. I'm just gonna call it txt. And guess what? I don't need all this. I can cut it, put it here. this here and then I return input I can give the input an initial value of zero it's fine so guess what I don't need all this stuff I can make it e smaller I'm gonna do this I'm gonna declare it and create it at the same time and Q set A will be simply the number entered and I'm gonna use the text box A. See, make it really easy to follow my code here. I can do this three times. Set the ABC. You guys got a chance to like I, I try to put the video as much as I can on YouTube but I haven't got a chance to put the uh, closed captioning but if I'm going too fast you can always go back and watch it and I suggest you do so once I have all my three variables I'm gonna solve it And then, if it was able to solve it, it's solved. Then what do I do? And what happens if it doesn't do? Well, if it's solved, all I gotta do is set um, the label x1 answer to x1, right? And so on. But notice label x1 answer is inside this at this level it's a class level it's a field but inside this anything that's at a lower curly brackets I should say is accessible that's why this one is accessible same thing here this button handler class is inside this input class so the label x1 answer is at the same level 
as this private class. Therefore, I can access it, label x1 answer, it's right there, dot, and I just set the text. Where is the text I'm gonna use? Well, it's in Q, that get x1 returns on oh wait x1 is a double and set text expects a, expects a string so I need to convert that double down to a string can I do to a string here no but I can use a wrapper class I use the to string method I'm using a parenthesis, sorry. There. I can do that. And I can do the same thing for X2. What if it wasn't available? If it's not solved, then I can just set something, set text, you know, I'm gonna say not available in case it fails. It's one of the next two. Let's see if it works. So if I say two, five, and three, solve. Interesting. Where did I screw up? It should work, right? Obviously, there's something wrong. Must be in my quadratic solve formula here. Must be here. can I figure out? Let's put a breakpoint there. Double click on the bar. There's the dot. I use this debug. So I said two, five, and three. I click solve and stop there. Creates my quadratic. Let's see, quadratic right now has there's my quadratic. A, B, C are nothing there. Let's see if that's where I'm screwing up. Aha. Huh. So A was A. Oh look, we put two, we should have put five for for B. So I put the same A, B, C. Ah, guess what I did wrong. In here, instead of using the text field I pass, I put txt a. Should have done this. This is where the error was. It should be the variable I pass, not just txt a. So if I run this, two, five, and three, there you go. x1 is equal one, and x2, 1.5. What if I put 30 here? It's not available. Because that's a negative number. I put zero. That works, right? And I think I made a mistake in my quadratic here because it's minus B, right? The actual formula is minus b. So if I put two, five, three, it should negative be negative one and negative one point five. 
which it is. That was all, huh? And we're not done yet. So let's take a few minutes. So, every time we deal with a math problem, we gotta solve it, right? We can say solve problem, solve the equation, just solve, whatever. What I'm gonna do, in this quadratic, I'm gonna make an interface instead of a class. I'm gonna call it math equations. So, notice it's exactly as a class. Actually, if I were to change the word interface for class, Java wouldn't know the difference. Because the name of this file is the same as this object. Well, we call it interface for now. So all our math equations we can say boolean has a solution right not all the math problems have solutions and also you know so equation so I'm gonna be taking this uh, calc class or statistics class and I have my I don't want to do everything by hand when I took, took statistics, I took it as a calc base, so it was like a third year. And at the time, the TI-85 and 86 were like the biggest computer or calculators. They weren't color or anything like that. It was just basic LCDs. Uh, the instructor said, you are allowed to use that calculator and all these functions. I'm like, okay, so what, I, what did I do? I made programs inside the calculator so I didn't have to know the formulas. So all I need to do was put the enter the input values and there's the answer. <laughs> Same thing for everything else actually. And, and so I asked, you said I could use the calculator, yeah. And you said I could use whatever is in the calculator. I'm not cheating. I just reprogram the calculator for my advantage. So Get a couple of, you know, well, it's not as sophisticated to do an interface, but if you were to do this on a computer, I will do an interface. And so I have this this quadratic class, you know, and I'm gonna implement my math equations. So now, you see that has a red squiggly line Because it's saying this math equations interface, you have these two methods, and those two methods need to be found in this class. So there are two ways. It says make the second one says make type quadratic and abstract. What does that mean? That means that because if this class were to be abstract then it will be implemented in the child class but we don't have a child class so we're just going to add unimplemented methods and here are the two has solution and solve equation actually the solve equation and solve is the same so guess what I can just get rid of that and just put it here there's my solve equation. So I don't need to solve anymore. Yeah. 
And what about has solution? Yeah, it's the same thing as is solved. So instead of returning false, I return solved. So I don't need this method called is solved. So I just substitute those and here I call solid equation. And that's it. So now my class has by implementing that interface is guaranteed to have a method called has solution and a method called solve equation. So if we have a team building a bunch of math equations, it doesn't matter who built it, you know there's a method called has solution and another one called solve equation that you can call. Because everybody agreed to implement that interface. So in my panel, I should just change this. You know, to call it solve the equation. And instead of solve, I call it has solution. There. So it works. Are we good? So obviously, it didn't save the other class we made with the uh, falling stars. Did we put that in Blackboard? I don't think I did. Alright, take ten, five minutes. <laughs>